I want to talk about the new line of very low, low cost uh, 3D interaction workstations that we, that we have developed, and specifically um, the Razer Hydra input devices that are, um, that are used to run them. So the setup we have here is a, is a regular 3D TV. This is a 55 inch uh, LED 3D TV. Uh, which I'm actually currently running in stereo mode, which is why it looks a little bit fuzzy. The reason for that will become clear later on. Uh, and then we have the, the Hydra input device, uh, which has this electromagnetic coil down here at the bottom, and then the two, uh, the left and right handles. Uh, each of those handles has seven buttons uh, and the joystick on top and the little shoulder button down here. Um, and in the context of the, uh, of the VUI VR toolkit, the device is represented as two six degree of freedom tracked uh, input devices, meaning that we are tracking them in position and orientation. So you can see these uh, gray cones here on the screen that correspond to the, uh, this one is the left and this one is the right handle, uh, and you see how they are following them uh, around as I move the devices back and forth, left, right, up, down, and also as I rotate the devices. Now one thing that's important to note here is that unlike other 3D input devices that we have, um, these are not absolute devices per se, which means that the, the representation of the input device, meaning the gray cone, is not exactly at the physical location of the handle that we normally do it, but it is slightly offset. And the primary reason for that is that the Hydra is based on electromagnetic tracking, and the problem with electromagnetic tracking is always that there is a global distortion in the tracking field, uh, meaning that while relative motion moving to the left, right, up, down, and so forth are captured very well, uh, absolute positions um, are distorted. And there are ways of calibrating for that, um, but they go beyond um, the effort and the hardware involvement that we have for these uh, very small-scale environments. So the way we are using them is a bit different in that there's just this offset between where the computer thinks your device is and where you think the device is, which takes a little bit more getting used to than the setup where the two of them are exactly identical, where you can just grab them uh, into the display and pick something up with your hand and pretty much ignore the cone. But uh, it takes only a bit of practice, then you actually get used to it fairly well. Um, and this is a better approach than having to try the cone to follow the device because then any offsets as you move through the space due to uh, distortion in the tracking field will become very obvious and very, uh, well, will become very bad, actually. So it's better to do it this way. So it's important to keep in mind that it is a six-degree of freedom track device, but it is not an absolute track device like uh, optical tracking systems or high-end tracking systems. But when you work around that, you can do very well with the device. So to show a little bit what we can do here, I uh, loaded up my favorite benchmark program, which is the Neotech Construction Kit. And we are starting out with an empty box here, which, using the handles, I can pick up and move around. And you're seeing how the motions of the box correspond one-to-one to, one to, one to the motions I'm doing with my hands. Um, I can use either hand to do that. If I grab the box with both hands and pull it apart or push together, I can make the box bigger or smaller. That's just very standard uh, VUI navigation stuff that just directly maps to this device. Um, I can also bring up uh, user interface components like the main menu by pressing a different button. In this case, I'm having the menu mapped onto the screen, so it's not actually floating in space. Uh, but if I bring up a freestanding dialog like this one, I can pick it up with the device and actually move it around in ways that are not necessarily useful. But unless you prohibit them explicitly, they just work that way. So just to show a little bit in this program, some of you might have seen this before, uh, it allows you to do uh, interactive molecular design. I can just by pressing uh, one of the button devices in empty space, I can create a new uh, building block, in this case a carbon atom, and then by pressing the other button here, I can connect another one, can create another one, can connect those two, uh, they form a bond, I can just keep doing that, uh, and I can build here a, a hex ring uh, of carbon atoms, come on, bond, there you go, they don't really want to bond. Um, and so just I can build all kinds of structures here, and the important thing is um, that uh, it actually works really well. The reason why I like this program is that it's a benchmark for the usability and immersiveness of a particular display system. The longer it takes to build a particular structure, and in my case that structure is a buckyball, just because I like them so much, uh, the longer it takes, the less immersive and the less usable the system is. And the Hydra devices are actually very good in combination with the 3D TV. Um, you can build fairly complex structures uh, really quickly. Oops, I made a mistake here. This needs to be a pentagon. Um, and the reason why I'm still filming this in stereo, why it's a little bit fuzzy in the video, uh, is because without stereo, it would be really hard for me uh, to, to align these atoms because it is, after all, uh, a three-dimensional shape that I'm interacting with. 
um, and so it had to be had to be done this way. Okay, I'm picking up this one. I made before, making one more, make one more pentagon. All right, zoom out a bit. Uh, so I don't want to go through the whole thing. Uh, I just wanted to show uh, how the uh, how the Razor Hydra is uh, is handled by uh, by the software, how it is used as a uh, a six degree of freedom device, meaning uh, unlike the unmodified Wii mode, it doesn't just uh, track some of your uh, of your interaction, it actually tracks the full position and orientation of your hands, meaning that you can interact with the computer in a very natural fashion. You don't have to think about how to pick up the space in order to move it around. You don't have to think about uh, how to create and align atoms to make bonds. It's just a very natural thing because it uses the same motions and interactions that you would use with a real object. And that's really the main thing here. Um, but again, the slight downside of it is uh, that due to the distortion in the electromagnetic tracking field, um, it is not an absolute positioning device, which is a bit of a problem for certain applications, but as it turns out, uh, not for this one. And that is actually the screensaver. Never mind. Oh, come on. Okay, here we are back again. I uh, hope nobody saw the password. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, the... Uh, the idea is I can build these structures very quickly. I'm not sure if I want to actually do the whole thing. Um, but now that I'm started, I want to finish it and see if I can get it done. Uh, if you only have a single input device, meaning only a single uh, single one of these handles, it's actually pretty quick to finish building uh, the structure because towards the end, you have to kind of sew it up. Uh, and the, the last couple of atoms really don't want to bond. But if you have two hands like here, uh, it's very easy to just force the bond by grabbing one atom, making another one, and just forcing it like so. Uh, grabbing this guy, grabbing that guy, and whoop, oh, that missed it. And we are done. And have a look at this. Yep, looks like a buckyball, all right. Um, there we go. Now, of course, we can use a lightsaber and <laughs> slash it in half. No, I'm joking. That doesn't really work. Uh, doesn't do anything. Anyway, so that's the, uh, that's the thing. These are our low, low cost um, VR environments. You just pay for the 3D TV. Um, the hydras, computer running it, and you're good to go. Um, and it's not exactly the same as one of the next step up, which has head tracking and, a, and an absolute tracking system. Um, but considering that it's really quite cheap, considering how cheap 3D TVs are these days, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a good first step. And it can always be augmented later by adding, uh, for example, by adding an optical tracking system. All right.